What's up, y'all? Rob here, Square Wheels, back with another one. Not in the garage. Today's going to be more of an educational one. Uh, today I'm talking about relays. So I just completed the Underglow install on my Infinity Q50. If you haven't seen the video, go check it out. It got almost a thousand views in the first 24 hours, which is blowing my mind that that you guys are actually, you know, clicking on my stuff. So I appreciate the support. Keep checking me out. If you're brand new to the channel, please consider liking and subscribing. I've got plenty more stuff coming uh, for my Infinity Q50 and wider. I really plan on, on going wider with just general vehicle stuff and product reviews. So stay tuned. Anyway, back to the relays. So, so in order to get that project done, I need to run switch power to my underglows and I didn't want to manually switch them on and off. I really wanted them to react to my vehicle. Um, so whenever I was unlocking or opening or closing the doors, I wanted them to be a part of that welcome animation. I showed you guys a million times, but I can't get enough of it. Sometimes I open the garage door and just unlock my door just so I can see it happening. Anyway, in order to make that happen, I needed to use a relay and I'd been intimidated by the concept of relays forever, you know, cause they just have weird numbers on them. It doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. So. Um, I'm kind of happy that this project forced me to learn it. So what I'm doing in this video is just breaking down the concept of an automotive relay, how I used it, and try to make it really simple so that if you're interested in using it, um, you can use this as a guide. Shout out to Jamaican Senpai. He's planning on using all these DIYs to do a very similar implementation on his Infinity Q50. Check him out. Check out the progress. He's got a tough build already, but it's going to be fire once he gets this lighting in place. Okay, so let's talk about relays. So to start, I'm going to talk about when it makes sense to use a relay. Um, starting at the most basic. So here's the most basic uh, example. Say you've got a device, let's just call it a light bulb, and you want to provide power to it. So you tap a positive 12 volt power source and you run it to that light bulb and it turns on. Now the issue with this is as long as that is connected, it's going to be pulling power from your battery and eventually it'll drain your battery till it's completely dead, right? So. Realistically, we don't want our light bulbs running full time, and that's why we install switches on them. So in this example, we've got that same 12 volt power source, and in line, we've wired a switch so that when that switch is turned on, it's gonna provide power to that light bulb, and when that switch is turned off, the circuit's gonna be broken, and it's not gonna be drawing any power or delivering any power to that light bulb. The downside with this switch is that it requires a manual step. Somebody needs to go flip that light switch and provide power to that bulb. So what if there was a way that we could use a mobile phone app? And in that app, we click a button and it tells some device to provide power to that power source. Well, we have that. And in my implementation, I used a Blue Ghost. And Blue Ghost does exactly that so you can click in the app or you can have it respond to certain triggers and whenever you perform that action it'll provide power on one of its 12 volt outputs and hypothetically light up that light bulb the switched power wasn't providing enough amperage to power my underglow so the blue ghost it provides 12 volts of switch power, but it's only providing a maximum of two amps, which is enough for one LED, right? I'm using it for my LED emblem. I'm using it for my demon eyes, but for an entire underglow kit, it's gonna take some more punch. And uh, I think the minimum that it needs is a good five amps. I know for a fact my battery can provide that amount of amperage, um, but the Blue Ghost, it says in the documentation it can't do it. So I just needed a way to still use the Blue Ghost as the switch, but to switch a big chunk of power directly from the battery. Hope that makes sense. And that, guys, is where a relay comes in. So what this relay does is it kind of sits in the middle of your implementation and it also kind of acts as a traffic cop to decide when to deliver power to your device. So you're always going to have it hooked up to the battery. You're always going to have it hooked up to the ground. You're always going to have it hooked up to your device and you will have basically a switched wire that comes in 
and tells it when to provide power from the battery to the device. So whenever somebody clicks a button in that app, it'll send uh, an electrical signal to the relay and have the relay click. And you'll actually hear the relay click over and that's when it's providing power to that light switch. And as soon as that app or whatever it is, what that trigger um, stops, then you'll hear it click again and it'll stop pow providing power from the battery to your device. That's it. Now, all these relays come with standard um, numbers on them. Don't ask me what those numbers mean. I don't know, I don't care. Um, and you don't really need to either. All you need to know is that the one labeled 85 always goes to your ground. The one labeled 30 always comes from your battery. The one labeled 86 always comes from your device. That's gonna be your switch input. And the 87 will always go to the device that you're trying to provide switched power to. Now, some of them have an additional wire. I think it's called like 87A. Um, in that case, it will actually be two wires that you're switching power or two devices that you're switching power between. So 87 will be light bulb A and 87A will be light bulb B. And then when you click on and off in the app, when it's on, it'll provide power to 87. And when it's off, it'll provide power to 87A. So this is another case where you're always gonna be providing power unless there's a switch further up the circuit. So here's an example. This is an automotive relay and uh, I'll link it down in the description. Um, I think I got a five pack of these for like 10 or 15 bucks, but yeah, I'll link it down in the description. But if you look on here, let me see if I can, you can see it's got those exact same numbers that we just talked about that literally make no sense. I still don't get the, the nomenclature behind it, but it is what it is. It's always going to be the same on these automotive relays. So the 86, the 85, the whatever you can pay attention to. But I also took the liberty of color coding the diagram that uh, I'm showing up on the screen here and coordinating it with the colors that come out of this relay here. So all you really need to do is take the red wire, hook it up to your 12 volt source, take the blue wire, hook it up to your light bulb or whatever it is that you're trying to power. The black always goes to ground. The white will go to your blue ghost or whatever you're using to deliver your switched power source. And then this one, uh, I just left dangling. I covered it so you know it wasn't gonna be shorting anything out or anything like that. You can cut it off or you can just get a relay that doesn't have this extra 87A wire on it. But yeah, these four are gonna be your keys basically. And then if you do have a second device, then you just hook it up to this one. And then instead of an on off switch, it'll be switching power between your light bulb A and your light bulb B on these two. That's it y'all. Hope I covered this. I hope this was pretty clear. I hope this demystifies the whole concept of relays, but these things are actually pretty handy once you start getting into these sort of implementations where you don't always want power running to your devices. So I'm glad I learned this. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, go ahead, hit that like button. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If not, hit me up in the comments. Let me know if there's anything that I missed, if anything I misstated or if there's anything else that I can cover or make clear for you, please let me know. I'm here for y'all. Appreciate you. Catch you on the next one. Peace. In this example, now we've got that same 12 volt power saw. So in this example, we've got that same 12 volt. So in this example, we've got that same 12 volt power source.